reading from Luke the 14th chapter the 28th verse out of the New Living Translation and what does it say? But don't begin until you count the cost. Don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? Who would start a project without first counting up the cost, making sure that you have enough to finish it? I want to talk about just for a few moments, if you'd allow me, Lord, help me keep what I'm carrying. Lord, help. Stay right there, Vida, because I want you, just let's look at this text, because I need to give you a prophetic utterance uh, to tell you what's to come. Prophet Romero, would you just look at Exodus 23 and 26, New Living Translation, and you can read this, and I don't know what happened in the house. Hear me with prophetic ears. Would you read that, Vida? There will be no miscarriages or infertility in your land. And I will give you long for life. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, how am I so bad? There will be no miscarriages. Ah, he can't let it be your shot in this season. Bless his name. It's a good place right there, Vita. I know you've gone through some rocky situations. I know you've even been hit in the gut. But tell your neighbor, no miscarriages. What, what I'm carrying in this season got to come forth. What I'm carrying. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. To carry what you gave me. Help me to keep it. You thought it was over. You thought you were done. You thought you messed up to the point that it was over. But the Bible says there will be no miscarriages, no infertility in your land. You will have long life. You will have a full and fruitful life. The devil should have killed you before you got to this juncture. But I got a feeling you're getting ready to bring forth. I'm going to say, oh, no miscarriages. Just encourage a neighbor. It won't die. It's got to happen. Whatever he said. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Help me, help me to keep what I'm carrying. Help me, help me to keep what I'm carrying. It's not that I'm acting funny. I'm just protecting what's in my spirit. I'm just protecting what God gave me. I can't compromise. I can't take a chance. Yeah. Oh, Help me. Come on, shake. Come on, the coat. Yes, God. There will be no miscarriage. No abortion. You got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. Just tell you, 
you couldn't mess this up if you tried. This that you're carrying is past you. You've not crossed every T. You've not dotted every... I, I'm talking to some individuals that say, I know I messed up, but the Lord said, you will not. let go I almost messed up come on you ought to be honest with yourself but you ought to say thank God for Jesus and thank God for the Holy Ghost because I realize I've come too far to scramble what's in my belly I've gone through too much I've suffered too long just to give it up like that In this season, each of us has taken this time to the Lobokosha to reevaluate. I feel like running. Mm. We've been reevaluating, we've been rethinking. Mm. And recontemplating every essence of our life. God say, I've shut down everything to limit your distractions, preferably that you will have a pipeline directly to me. But unfortunately, there have been some that have not taken this time and used it wisely. So God says, what I'll do is, I'll re-shut down everything and hope that I can get your attention. Again, because you didn't learn the first time. This is not in my notes here, but Chanel, I just feel like I need to say this right here. There will be no miscarriages. God says, so all that's happening around you is to protect you, to ensure that what I put in you comes forth full force and full term. There has been an immense amount of pressure put upon the saints to withstand the days and this evil time. And I tell you something, pastoring during a pandemic has been both eye-opening and breathtaking. Pastors nationwide have questioned their call. I've battled depression and exhaustion. Some pastors have dealt with membership and financial loss. But I come to tell you that the Lord is still in charge. He's still sovereign. And out of every mental battle that I've had to fight, I must say it looks like I'm winning. In the midst of the battle, it looked like I was losing. But coming through the process, I found myself winning. Usually under pressure, we buckle and bow. We succumb to fighting using carnal measures, but I've learned the power in this season of silence. Not to respond to everything, not to fight every battle, but to keep moving. Parents with children we've dealt with, schools been shut down since mid-March. Increased food bills, trying to keep them focused. Our kids have dealt with cabin fever, sick of being locked up in-house. They've been virtually challenged, trying to stay on task, looking at a computer all day and playing Fortnite at night, waking up at an, in the middle of the afternoon. Police brutality and social unrest. It's been difficult living while black. Seemingly, it looks like we've created and committed a crime without having done anything. 
single in the pandemic has been difficult for some. <laughs> We're live. Uh, you get commentary limited back there, April. Uh, but you you understand the, the, some of the struggles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Corporate America <laughs> laid individuals off, eliminated positions, sent people home. You've dealt with perhaps your salary being cut or even eliminated. Received word that one of my faithful members was just laid off the other day for up to six to eight months, in the midst of this pandemic. But I believe that his testimony will be that the Lord is in charge of the whole earth. And I won't lose anything. As a matter of fact, this is my season to gain momentum. It's an opportunity for my business to take off like it has not ever before. Somebody just talked to me to tell me it's been difficult to keep carrying what the Lord has put in us. If we be real, some people in here have thought about backsliding, and the truth is some of you have backslidden and you just haven't gotten caught. I'm going to say it again in case you didn't miss me for the amens. I'm going to say it again. You've thought about backsliding, and the truth is some people have already backslidden. You just have not been caught mm -hmm. because uh, you've had time now to reevaluate your relationship and to see how sincere it was when you didn't have the ability to corporately gather, some things you thought you overcame show back up during this pandemic. Some stuff you thought, the battles you thought you won resurfaced in this season. Glory to God. But you had to rethink and to process, God, is this really what you have for me? As a matter of fact, there has been an evaluation of the people, places, and things that were connected to you in this past season to see if it was worthy of you going into the next season with those people, places, and things. Talk to me here. Oh, here we are looking at our text. The Bible is clear. Uh, uh, before I get to the book of Luke, I, I, I want to help every Holy Ghost feel born again believer that I got good news, Riri. Uh, because sometimes we try to figure out, Cynthia, where do I fit in the body? But according to 1 Corinthians 12 and 7, New Living Translation, I like how this read. It says a spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. And I know that for years we thought perhaps that the Holy Ghost was just for the evidence of speaking in tongues. And while we understand evidence is necessary or important, it is not the telltale story if you got the Holy Ghost. The truth is once you get the Holy Ghost, once you're filled with, baptized in the Holy Ghost, once the paraclete lives on the inside of you, according to our text in 1 Corinthians 12, we all have a gift. Now the difficulty sometimes becomes trying to figure out what that gift is. Can I tell you it is your responsibility to seek the Lord to discover what that gift is that's locked up on the inside of you. And one of the biggest things and the travesties that I've seen in the body of Christ is that so many of us are trying to be like everybody that we've negated our own authenticity and originality. Tell your neighbor I've been through too much to try to be like you because the truth is if you went through half of the stuff I've gone through you wouldn't make it out alive uh, you know it's the truth because you've almost, almost gone crazy trying to work out your own soul salvation and trying to stay committed to what God have called you to do uh, look at your neighbor again and say neighbor I got something you need and you perhaps have something I need uh, and in this season I refuse to keep going around in circles uh, hallelujah and I refuse for what's inside of me to die off that I would not be usable for the kingdom of God. Talk to me up in here and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm trying to keep a hold of what I'm carrying. So if it seems like I'm a little reserved, I'm acting a little funny, I don't respond to everything you say because the truth is some people
people are still messy in the pandemic. Oh, Y'all ain't gonna like me here. I'm going to say it again. Some people don't have nothing to do but keep gossiping in the pandemic. But tell your neighbor, if you get you just a little business, I promise you it'll take away your inability to analyze my life. I got too much going on to be playing games. As a matter of fact, I almost dropped out of elementary school because of recess. I don't play games. Look at your neighbor say, I don't play games. Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm trying to work my ministry, trying to work my business, trying to figure out how to multiply my, y'all ain't saying my finances, to be caught up with what you did last summer and last night. So be it. If that's the road you decide to take. So don't get, uh, don't start saying I'm acting funny when I cut you off. And I get you at the net Because I don't want to hear it Tell your neighbor I'm not a trash can So don't bring it to me Because if you allow Continue to dump trash on me You perhaps are going to kill what's in me Yeah, I'm talking to some people online uh, That some people have continued to try to bring you negativity In your downtime That's how come you even got to watch watching the news all day Because you'll watch Fox, CNN, MSNBC And be crazy and confused But tell your neighbor In this city Season. This pressure, this suffering has pushed me to my knees because I got to figure out what is it that's in me that God you want to use. Because the truth is, if you're a prophet, well, who you call to? Who are you called to change? If you're an intercessor, who should you be interceding for? What's your jurisdiction? If you're called to move in the working of miracles, what kind of miracles? Where should you be located? Boshiah. Look at your neighbor say, I got to keep what I'm carrying at all costs. So here we are in our text says that we take upon us a profession. We are like a man that desires to build a tower or a building. We must consider the expense of it. It's easy when you get a prophetic word to say, yes, Lord. It's easy when God starts telling you what he wants you to do to say, yes, Lord, I want you to open a business. I want you to start this. And you're like, yes, Lord, I'll obey. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go through. But until the storms of life start raging, you start to question, is this really worth it all? And I must tell you that you must count up the cost. You must ensure that you sit down and analyze that your next move is going to be able to be funded and backed up by God. Talk to me here. Uh, it's a fool that walks out in any plan that has not thought about the good, bad, and the ugly. What happens if I launch and it doesn't work? What happens if I start it and I don't make any money? What? Y'all ain't talking to me. I was talking even to uh, several of my members that was contemplating relocating. And I'm not opposed to relocating because in due season, the Lord, if he delays his coming, will allow us to launch other ministries in other parts of this country but my question is how much money do you have to get up and to move y'all ain't saying you got to count up the cost. How much rent do you have in your bank account if you go and don't find a job? If you go, y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm not talking about the dependency upon somebody else, but you got to count up the cost. You got to ensure that where I'm going is going to be good for my family. That it's going to be accessible to others. Y'all ain't saying that in case something pop off. You got to think and count up the cost. Some of us want to be business owners because it sounds like it's good and it's popular. But I wish I had about four entrepreneurs that would talk about the season of sacrifice you must go through to try to launch a viable business. I'm not talking about a, lie, a hobby. I'm talking about a business that actually makes money and brings money to the bottom line. What it's like when you expect people to support you and they don't. What it's like when you get a building and lose it and folks in the city will make fun of you and laugh at you and act like they're praying for you. What happens when the ones that tell you, go ahead, I got your back are the same ones that won't even service you. You got to count up the cost. Where am I called to? What is this market segment that I'm called to? What area should I be located in? What exactly should I be selling? Because everybody looks like they're selling the own 
thing. The same thing. But guess what? When everybody's selling the same thing, make your own. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Tell your neighbor, I was created to create. I was created to innovate. I was created. Y'all ain't liking me here. Tell your neighbor, I'm carrying something. So I got to remove myself from the doubters. Not the people that would give me some critical thinking and constructive thoughts, but people that always got something negative and put their foot on every idea that I have. But then the issue that I have with you having something to say is the thing you told me not to do is the thing you trying to do. I got a problem with that. So tell your neighbor, think it not strange if I cut you off in this season to come because I need people that are not just dream vacillators and dream helpers. Uh, dream pushers is what I need. I don't need dream vacillators. People in the middle. They don't care if you make it or if you don't. I don't need dream haters. Folks that I hate on my dream and my vision. But I need some people that'll say here, I'm going to help you with everything in me. This is what you should do. And some people can't push you because they ain't made it yet. Some people won't push you because everything they put their hands to fail. But tell your neighbor, I don't care if you're my mama or my daddy, my sister or my brother, if you can't be with me, you're obviously against me and I got to cut, 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 cut you off. Ministry. Ministry. Tell any, tell anybody that would think about starting the church. Hallelujah. Unless you have people that you're called to and not see, because what happens is, I found this out, Sherry, people will start a church with the expectations from the people up the street, from that church to come to their church. You're not starting a church, you're starting a swap meet. Y'all ain't saying nothing, but if you're going to look into starting a ministry, you got to figure out who am I called to and who would be called to me. Who am I? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Glory to God. Because some of us are nothing more than modern day thieves. So this text says that if you're going to desire to build in this season, you got to sit down at a table and you have to use some statistics. You have to use some ideologies. You need some architects that's going to help you to build a community of success. Success. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm not just working for me, but I'm working for those that are coming behind me. Uh, yes, let's compare the charge with what's in my pocket. Lest I'll be laughed at and nothing will come out of it. I'm going to say it again. I got to look at what I have in my pocket or the ability to get from the bank. Because if all I have is an idea but no financial backing, I don't have anything but a thought. And I will be laughed at. And when it's time for evaluation to come, nothing will be finished. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, those that intend to build must sit down and count up the cost. Yes. Look at your neighbor, say, nextly, I have found out that I got something in my spirit that everybody else does not have. Feel for such a long time. I tried to use everybody else as a litmus test. If I sound as good as them, if I look as good as them if I have the marketability as them but God said if you were just like them then I wouldn't need you but what I need you to do is to get confident in who I created you to be and if you get confident in that lane then you will produce here it is can I tell you Cynthia you're looking at a boy that could not read in first and second grade but here it is that I'm almost 40 years old a boy that couldn't read at 10 years old is writing something for somebody else to read at 40. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the thing you couldn't do is the thing God's enabling you to do in this next. So, sometimes we allow our own in inabilities to affect the weight of who we're called to impact. We look at people, unfortunately, we've made social media God that we allow the opinions of a hundred people to stop us from producing. I'm so sick of people that's launching and doing this and they got 140 likes. So then you read that it got in your spirit and it killed what God told you to do. That's only 140 people out of over 100 million people in the world. Why are you allowing less than 1% to tell you what you unqualified to do? I don't care 
have your job closed down, shut up, and say you won't come back for a year. <laughs> you got to look at it as an opportunity to launch out into what God really called me to do. Because <laughs> you weren't all that happy going to work, no way. <laughs> you was complaining, having to get up, saying you need vacation time. And here you are saying now well, that they eliminated your job. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing I did when I had a job. Trust God. I trusted them when I got a job. I trust them when I don't have none. And some of y'all made more money on unemployment than you did working anyway. So what are you complaining for? And if you were wise, you were putting that in the bank. Matter of fact, you were putting it in your safe because we don't trust the total banking system. Keep enough in there to let the world know I ain't broke. But I got more, hallelujah, in my safe than I got in my bank because I'm getting ready to bust a move. And can I tell everybody listening to me, there is more trouble that's on the rise and I want you to make sure hear me in case you say one no prophet telling you get you some water get you some perishable and non perishable goods date them rotate them so that when trouble comes back up you say I'm ready to make it through this pandemic ah, there's an election coming they don't know which way it's going to go but can I tell you regardless God is still in charge and I want to tell you if Donald J. Trump gets in there a second term God is still in charge y'all ain't saying nothing because can I tell you since I've been alive almost 40 years I can't really think of a president that's been totally in favor of me anyway hallelujah I know we said we had a black president with a, a, a president Bill Clinton but he's the one that enacted a bill that's locked up so many people for small petty thieves and petty crimes and they still can't get out but we got folks killing people and driving by that haven't been caught yet y'all ain't saying nothing the government ain't never really been for black folks because they gave you welfare to work but I want to tell you as a prophet in the Lord's church that you need to move past welfare to work and get your tail off of welfare and go to work find you a job don't allow your educational limitations to block stop and hinder you this is the season for the entrepreneur I know we've killed Donald Trump from the pulpit but one thing we cannot deny is that he's a businessman he used the laws of the land for him that worked in his favor if his business wasn't making money he found bankruptcy and started over again he's a most top billionaire. I'm not saying that he's a perfect man. I don't like the way he talks. I don't like the way he looks by his skin. I think he's somewhat ignorant. But I must tell you I'm pulling on the entrepreneurial spirit that's in the number one office at this point. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to invest in the gift that I'm carrying. Say yeah. Yes, I'm sitting down and I'm counting up all of the calls. I said, God, if I'm going to write a book, I might as well write it while I'm sitting down. If I'm going to launch a ministry, I might as well launch it while I'm sitting down. Is there anybody that's up in here that says, God, got something for me to do and I'm getting ready to bring it for because if you're not for me you are against me so I don't mean to push you out of my circle but if you can't push me to my destiny you are an enemy to what God called me to be in this season I won't be laughed at I won't be laughed out got to produce tell your neighbor God I said tell them put your mask on throw your boys like an arrow of deliverance and say God has me of you yes he does you had a dream hear me now some folks have dreams and you sit back and wait for the bad dream to unfold that scares me about the saints that they'll see negativity but they won't pray against what they saw if I saw my grandbaby in a funeral I would rebuke death on every side doesn't mean that trouble won't come but the verdict got to change is there anybody here that says I've seen 
some negative stuff. But when I prayed, God, no, 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 he turned it. Yeah, he turned it. I'm not waiting to get bad news. I'm waiting to celebrate. I look at it like this. If they shut it back down, it's only so I can get more favor. It's only so I can get the interest rate that I'm supposed to have. If they shut it back down, I believe that God is positioning the world systems to be on my side. Shout it yes. 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 Yes, I feel like preaching up in here. Protect what you carry. How in the world do I protect it? Come here, Isaiah 1 and 19. If you be willing and obedient, you will possess the good of the land tell your neighbor you got to be willing and you got to be obedient ay, ay, ay. can i tell you when he's saying get the moving don't wait don't ask nobody what you think if conditional word if trigger word there's no if if there's no I, in order to get if, I got to have I am. Tell your neighbor if I'm going to get to the other side. I got to be willing to press in to get to the other side. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I got a feeling that God is ready to give it to me. How do I? Bring forth willing obedience. Come here, Second Chronicles 7 14. If my people pray, tell your neighbor, willing obedient prayer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah! Yeah! Willing, obedient, prayer. Then I must be willing to eat. Eat the word. Why? Because Exodus 23 said, Exodus, there will be no miscarriages. If you are willing and obedient and you pray, you don't have a choice but to bring forth. Can I tell you, I want to talk to the Sumpters, to the Tillmans, to the Gillespies, to the Pulliams. You are Lady Mickles, Sister Bateman, a game changer. Yay! Chanel, Jazz, Phil. I didn't come, Danny, to fit in, but Taylor, I came to change Shariah, the game. You never seen it done like this. Watch me go to work, Nikki. I got a push in my spirit. Watch me, watch me. Watch me produce in the pandemic. Watch me prosper in the pandemic. Watch me be promoted in yeah. 
bring you over. Tell your name. You guys have a church open. Tell your neighbor, I know he will. Tell your neighbor, I know he will. Feel like dancing. I said, tell him, I know he will. I know he will. I know he will. Come on, shut up, come on. You can't fail. You can't quit. Come. Come by letter. Christian experience. Candidate for baptism. It's a good day to give your life to the Lord. Because what you carry won't die. Lord, help me to keep what I'm carrying. You can't kill it. Romans 8 and 31. If God be for me. Who can be against me? The Bible says when Zion travailed, she brought forth. Use it as a nine month process. But the Bible gives us a highway to destiny. If you travail, you bring forth. If you go through the pressure, if you endure the contraction, sufferology part three, you can bring forth. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I feel a travail in my spirit. Oh, that thou would bless me. Enlarge my territory. Feel I don't know what's on you. But oh, 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 oh. was waiting on you to fail but tell them don't hold your breath because if you do there'll be a funeral because I can't die I can't die about all of them don't hold your breath that's it be saved. Don't hold your breath. Who told you you wouldn't be nothing? Who told you you wouldn't succeed? Ah, uh, but I feel the color purple anointing here. Till you do right by me. But until you do right, you're here. Hallelujah. 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 I hear this for three people. Your waiting period just shifted. Just shift. Ow! Ow! Just shift it. I got 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 it.
say you're listening write real big capital letters I want to be saved I'm going to have one of the ministers of this house will contact you right now walk you through the plan of salvation it's not, it's not difficult it's simple Romans 10 and 9 confess your mouth believe in your heart God raised Jesus from the dead the Bible says you can be saved that's it I want to be saved I'm going to call and pray with you right now. Because unless you're saved, you're doing nothing but carrying demon babies. It's not until you come on this side of the blood that God will transition what you're carrying to be used for his glory. I'm going to say it again because you might be out on the world, in the world now pushing drugs, but then he'll save you. Now you'll push souls. He gave you a marketing plan. He gave you a strategy. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come from wherever you are. You want to be saved. We'll walk you through the plan of salvation. Oh, hey. Social distancing. Not supposed to lay hands on you. But lift your right hand. Lift your right hand in this room. I deputize you. I release the anointing of God according to 10 and, uh, Isaiah 10 and 27. The anointing that destroys yokes is upon your hand. And as you lay hands, burdens will be lifted, chains will be broken, yokes will be destroyed. Your baby shall literally leap today. Take that right hand, put it in your belly. I decree and declare that everything that have laid dormant comes to life this very hour. Oh, how about shy? I release the urgency of now. Come on, come on, come on. You don't believe your pants got power, certainly mine's don't. Come on, come on out of your belly. She'll flow. Rivers, living water, come forth. I stir that gift. I stir those anointings. I stir those talents. Hey, da 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 ba shandidiobosha. And I command you to come forth full force now. No, oh, no timidity, no fear. Come forth, hobo shata. Hey, hey, hey. God want to use you this very day. Hey, I speak to it. I speak to it educationally, financially, economy-wise, uh, religiously, cre creative ideas and arts. Come on, come on, come on. Come out of there. Come out of there. According to 1 Corinthians 12, Galatians 5, Romans 12, I command those gifts to come up, 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 and out. Hey, to be used for his glory. According to Ephesians 4, gifts come alive, come alive, come on, let them all shine. Hey, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Listen, we say God bless you to everybody.